I'm about to do your Aquarius September 2020 love reading, and in this reading we're going to take a behind the scenes peek at your romantic person of interest. Aquarius, how is it going? Come on in, have a seat, make yourself comfortable. My name is Alan from UnknownTruthTarot.com. Welcome back to another Aquarius love reading video. If this is your first time here and you have questions that you want answered about your romantic love life or your relationship, then start now by subscribing and clicking the bell icon so you never miss any of the Aquarius love readings I post for you every week. Now let's get on with the Aquarius reading for today because today we're going to take a behind the scenes peek at your romantic person of interest. So whoever it is that you are romantically involved with, romantically thinking about, or even energetically romantically connected to, we're going to take a behind the scenes peek at this person and find out if there's anything that they're hiding from you, anything that you might need to know about, anything that might need your awareness or your attention brought to it. So I'm going to start by pulling five cards for your person, and then I'm going to clarify everything with the second deck to see if we can get down to the bottom of the unknown truth about what's really going on with this person you're romantically connected to. Now keep in mind this is a general reading, and it's not even possible for it to resonate with literally every single Aquarius on the planet all at the same time. So regardless of how this reading resonates for you, you still probably want to check your Moon, Rising, and Venus sign videos because they can give you more insight and more clarity about what's really going on in your particular situation. And you can find the links to those videos in the description box down below. Now enough yakking. Let's get on with this Aquarius reading. And let's start by pulling five cards for what is going on with Aquarius' romantic love interest. What is it that Aquarius needs to know about this person they're romantically involved with or romantically thinking about or romantically connected to in some way okay let's get four more what's going on with aquarius's romantic love interest okay and if you're noticing a different background here i'm recording this reading for you at my girlfriend's house we are both doing homeschooling with our kids so i've got a seven-year-old son she's got a five-year-old son and my 21-year-old daughter <clears throat> is being their homeschooling teacher while she's at work and while I'm doing readings for you. Well, looks like we're getting an extra card for you, Aquarius. Or for your person, that is. What do we have? <clears throat> well, on the bottom of the deck, we have the Page of Swords. So this is news and messages. This is communication. Sometimes this can be premature, immature communication. Sometimes this is an energy of like trying to figure something out, trying to learn something, like trying to master something, studying it, putting in the due diligence, trying to figure it out. Sometimes this is an energy of trying to figure a person out, so they're they're keeping tabs on you, um, scoping out your social media pages, asking people about you, generally keeping tabs on you. Whoa, that doesn't happen for no reason. All these cards just fell out to expose the Queen of Wands, so... This is a bold, passionate, fiery, determined energy. This is someone who's very intuitive, someone who's fun to be around, someone who's you know, bold, maybe sassy. I don't know why that came to mind, but it did, so we're rolling with it. This is someone who knows exactly what they want, and they go after what they want. They don't take no for an answer. Huh. Which could be why they're trying to keep tabs on you right up, right under that. We've got a tower here. And then some new opportunity afterwards. So, <clears throat> Ten of Pentacles. Uh, weird that it's talking to me that way. It doesn't usually do that, but it is. So we're, we're rolling with it. Now, in your person's energy, Aquarius, we got the King of Cups, the Queen of Pentacles, Death, Temperance, the Knight of Swords, and the Ace of Wands. So I saw an Ace of Pentacles in there. We got an Ace of Wands actually on the table. Got a lot of court cards here. Three of these six cards are court cards. We've got this Page of Swords on the bottom. That's a court card. Right, that could mean that there's a lot of people involved in your person's life and in this situation between the two of you 
This King of Cups, this means that they have a lot of love and emotions for you. But they don't wear their heart on their sleeve. They may not necessarily express how they feel about you. They have feelings for you. They have a lot of love for you. They may not say it. They may not outwardly express it. It may not be publicly demonstrated, public knowledge. It might be something they're keeping to themselves. Let's clarify this King of Cups. Why is the King of Cups here for Aquarius' person, please? <clears throat> Tell me more about this King of Cups, please. That one just did a 360 spin. That was pretty cool. Okay. Alright. Bottom of the deck, we have the Six of Wands. So this is moving forward in success and victory. This is recognition as in your person being recognized for something sometimes this is recognition as in like your person themselves is recognizing something here maybe in terms of the way they feel hmm, maybe this is your person publicly recognizing how they feel i don't know let's see what we got here man clarify this king of cups we got the eight of swords the eight of cups the tower and we got judgment this is not looking like success and victory to me hmm this eight of swords this is your person being stuck in their head about something this is like thinking about something on a repeating loop in their mind grinding on it over and over again they're not sure what the safe step to take is here. And they're grinding on it. And they're feeling stuck, trapped, and blocked because they don't know what to do. It's like it's like a self-imposed mental prison of their own thoughts. It's like they're keeping themselves stuck with something that they're doing. We've got this Eight of Cups. This is detachment. This is like either emotional detachment or physical detachment, like physically walking away from someone. So I don't know if your person is stuck in their head about walking away from someone. Or if they're stuck in their head because you walked away from them. And maybe that's why they're keeping an eye on you. And like I said, right under that, we have a tower here. And the very next card, to clarify this King of Cups, is the other tower. So now we've seen the tower twice. This is, things come crashing down. This to me looks like someone walked away from your person. And things, like you walked away from them and things came crashing down. Or, maybe your person has someone else in... They're stuck in their head about walking away from them because it's going to bring the tower down. Or maybe they're not expressing how they feel right now because they're stuck in their head and they're about to walk away and bring the tower down. And we've got judgment. This is either... This is kind of a tricky card sometimes. This, this can either be your person passing their own final verdict and judgment on something. As in like making some final decision putting an end to something. Or this is a card of second chances. This can be like resurrecting something from the grave, bringing something back to life, transformed in a way that it's never going to be the same again. So th this could be like tower, a judgment, boom, this is over. Or this could be there was this walking away, this tower, and now they're wanting a second chance. It just seems to me like whatever it is your person wants, it's like they got their poker face on. They're not really, they're not expressing how they feel about this. They're just, they're just kind of staying trapped in their thoughts. I don't, I, I can't make sense of this Six of Wands though. This is success and victory. So maybe this is saying your person is now like emotionally balanced, emotionally stable. At one point, they they were stuck in their head 
over e someone walking away, either them walking away from someone or someone walking away from them. There was some tower moment. There was some some second chance that they received, and now they've been successful and victorious. There's a Ten of Pentacles and a Nine of Cups right under that, and a Page of Swords, which is the overall energy of the reading here. So this is like a stable, happy, uh, abundant, prosperous home life. This is like building a legacy. This is everything being good, like the way you would want it to be. Nine of Cups is wish fulfillment, and this is wish fulfillment for a lot of people. I mean, this this is a good card. And then the Page of Swords. This is that trying to figure something out, trying to keep tabs on someone. Not quite sure. The next card in your person's energy, Aquarius, is the Queen of Pentacles. So this is a feminine energy. This is someone who's very grounded, very stable, very abundant. It's like a, a, a mothering, nurturing type energy. This is someone who's good at managing the, the household, managing the home, managing like the, the 3D physical realm, like managing the, the children. This is who would manage the Ten of Pentacles. So I don't know if this represents you in their energy. Or let's, let's see, why is this Queen of Pentacles here? Hmm, yes. Oh, there we go. That one? Okay. Why is this Queen of Pentacles here, please? Get one more on this Queen of Pentacles. Okay, two it is. Three it is. Hey, I'm just the dude shuffling the cards. I don't get to pick it. Okay. And that was actually up here, but I don't think it's going to matter really. We got the Six of Wands on the bottom again. You saw how many times I shuffled that. This Six of Wands is important in some way, and I. It, this is moving forward in success and victory. This this is also recognition. Either someone recognizing your person or your your person recognizing something. To clarify this Queen of Pentacles, we got the Five of Pentacles, the Emperor, we got Death, the Three of Wands, and the Four of Cups. So this Five of Pentacles, this is abandonment. This is being left out in the cold walked away from I mean we we see this eight of cups walked away from abandoned I'm not sure which of these two came out first but we have death and the emperor here hmm. I, I, I'm feeling like the the death card came out first because there was like some transformation taking place here from being left out in the cold, this is like a transformation of that, that part dying away so that something new and better can be reborn, which would be this emperor energy. This is your person, or you maybe, maybe maybe it was you left out in the cold. It's, it's hard to tell, there are so many court cards here. It seems to be multiple people involved here, I, I'm not quite sure. But someone was left out in the cold, or someone Maybe this is you, and you walked away from them, and they felt left out in the cold by that. But they've transformed that into this emperor energy where they're taking control of their life, taking charge of the situation, putting together like a plan to get what they want, and then executing that plan to get what they want. Yeah, this three of wands, this is like, this person has already chosen their path leading to the world that they want. They've already started going down that path, taking steps down that path. And they're expecting something positive to come their way. They're expecting something good. It just hasn't arrived yet, and they're waiting on it. So this is that energy of, like, waiting on something that you're working toward and having this positive expectancy. It's actually going to show up. It's just not here yet. So this is that kind of limbo period there. And then we've got this Four of Cups. So this is either a love offer already being on the table and it's not being accepted or rejected. It's just kind of left hanging here in the air. Or this is your person, while they're waiting, they're, they're like planning on how to make this love offer to you. 
and, and they're not at the stage where they're actually ready to offer it yet because they're still waiting on that. They're still in limbo on that. Or this is them being afraid that you'll reject them. One of the, one of the two. I don't think it's that because we've got, we've got the six of wands, success and victory here. The ten of pentacles, the nine of cups. So, I mean, this is, this is looking good. The next card in their energy is death. So, again, here's this transformation and we've already seen death in the clarifiers for the queen of pentacles tell me more about death please why is death here for aquarius this person look at they're all trying to get away from me that one did jump out let's see that's why hmm On the bottom of the deck, we have the Ace of Cups. So this is a new beginning in love and emotions. There's some sort of transformation taking place regarding some new beginning in love and emotions regarding this cup of love being offered. That's This Ace of Cups is the cup that's hanging right here in this card. So there's some sort of transformation to the love offer that's on the table that hasn't been accepted or rejected yet. Or there's some sort of transformation in this whole being in limbo about whether they can offer this cup of love or not and i think that might be what's going on here we've got to clarify death we have the eight of pentacles the hierophant and the hanged man so this this eight of pentacles this represents work this is putting in the work on something putting in the time and effort and energy on something or being willing to put in the work on on this new beginning in love and emotions I think there's been slow, steady progress this whole time. And I think another, this, this Knight of Pentacles is the slowest night in the deck. This is like methodical, slow moving forward progress, not being in any hurry whatsoever. Now it shows up with the real deal. It shows up with the goods. It's just really slow. And I think there's a transformation in the slowness of that. Like this, there's been work put in here. And progress has been made, even though it doesn't look like it. And now we're transforming into this Knight of Swords energy. This is the fastest knight in the deck. So we're going from the slowest knight in the deck to the fastest knight in the deck. This is rapid forward movement, like rapid, decisive action on something. Rushing forward, speaking the truth. And then we have the Fool. This is taking the leap of faith, like that blind leap of faith. Not needing to know what the outcome is going to be first, just jumping off the cliff, figuring out how to grow their wings on the way down regarding this love offer. I mean, and this, this Knight of Cups, this is actions of love and emotions, actions toward romance. This is coming forward, making an offer of love, and he's delivering this Ace of Cups. That's the cup he's carrying in his hand. So they're putting in work on transforming this whole situation. The Hierophant, this is like divine guidance. This can represent commitment, taking things to the next level. But then we've got the Hanged Man. This is stagnation. This is progress being halted. This is like, this guy's hanging upside down from the tree of knowledge and he's trying to gain enlightenment on something. He's looking at things from different perspectives, different angles, looking at things differently than the, the normal way he would look at things trying to figure out what to do moving forward. And I think that's part of the, the transformation that's happening. It's like moving out of this stagnation and being able to actually come forward and make this love offer. The next card in their energy is temperance. So this is like blending two things together. This is like a assimilation, like the careful blending of the head and the heart. This is like mixing stuff together a little bit at a time, taking a step back, looking at the big picture of what's going on, how is all this playing out, and seeing where they need to come back in and make some adjustments, do some fine tuning. So this is like that back and forth, not being in this big rush, being very patient about things. This can also represent like the need to be patient about things, the need to kind of temper themselves, to, to rein themselves in some. Tell me more about temperance, please. Why is temperance here for Aquarius, this person? Well, that one's just screaming at me, dude. This one right here. 
Let's get one more about tempers, please. Let's get one more. Thank you. Bottom of the deck, we have three of cups. So this is reconciliation energy. This, wow. Holy. Almost said a wordy dirt. Holy crap. This is reconciliation energy. This is like being reunited, celebrating. So th this is, your person is trying to, trying to reunite and celebrate with you. They're trying to be patient about that. They're trying to take things slowly, like do a little bit, not mix enough together all at once to blow anything up. They're just trying to do things a little bit at a time. Look at the big picture of how's it working, make adjustments trying to get to this reconciliation with you to clarify temperance now temperance is a major arcana card to clarify it we got three major arcana cards so this is a very significant piece of the puzzle here in terms of you guys getting back together damn holy yeah this this is like with all of these cards being major arcanas, this is like the universe is involved. There's some external force being involved, like the Wheel of Fortune being right in the center of all this. This is the universe moving the wheel in the background, aligning things the way that they're supposed to be. That way, what is supposed to happen will happen, which to me is usually the meaning for this card, but we'll just go through them one at a time. The High Priestess. This is divine guidance. We already have... The hierophant out here we have the male and female energy counterparts of the divine connection between humans and everything else in the universe so this is this is your person getting divine guidance here this can represent the connection is a lot more than just a physical connection it's a lot more than just you know an emotional connection it goes much deeper than that it's like a spiritual type connection especially with both of them out here this is like divine counterparts right here this is almost as good as the lovers really so your person is trying to be patient they're getting intuitive hits about this gut feelings about this they they know like they know like they know that they're supposed to be with you is what this looks like to me the wheel of fortune like i said this is divine timing this is the wheel of fate the wheel of destiny a fated event this is the universe lining things up so that what is supposed to happen will happen and then we have the empress this is the mother of the tarot deck she's perpetually pregnant all new things are birthed through the empress so this is this is the birth of something new which would be this being reunited and celebrating right under that we have the nine of cups that's wish fulfillment right under that we have the ten of pentacles like i said most people's wish fulfillment is the ten of pentacles i guess it would be like the ten of cups and the ten of pentacles at the same time but this is a pretty damn good then we have the six of wands again success victory recognition of all of these things recognition of like this divine guidance this things are supposed to be a certain way it's them recognizing that this queen of wands they have a lot of passion a lot of desire for you they know exactly what they want, and they're not going to take no for an answer. Yeah, they're, they're just waiting on this to mature, waiting on this to like become fruitful for them, waiting on it to kind of pay off. This Seven of Pentacles is what ultimately turns into the Ten of Pentacles. This is kind of like about deciding, is this going to turn into the Ten of Pentacles I want? is this worth investing in or is this a spot where i need to like cut my losses and move on because it's never going to be the ten of pentacles they've already gone through that thought process that analyzing it and yeah that's why they want to get back with you that you are wish fulfillment to them it will be the ten of pentacles with you and this is them trying to temper themselves trying to hold themselves back so they don't mess anything up this also can represent the divine guidance, divine being involved. There's an angel on this card. Now the next card in your person's energy, Aquarius, is the Knight of Swords. This is the fastest moving knight in the deck. We already saw when we were clarifying the death card, that transformation from the Knight of Pentacles, the slowest knight in the deck, to the Knight of Swords. Here we are with that Knight of Swords again. 
rushing forward, taking rapid, decisive action on something, rushing forward, speaking the truth. Tell me more about this Knight of Swords, please. Why is the Knight of Swords here for Aquarius's romantic love interest? Let's get three on this Knight of Swords. All right. From the bottom, you can't make it up. The bottom of the deck, we got the Nine of Cups. Again, wish fulfillment. They're wanting to rush forward, take rapid, decisive action toward their wish fulfillment. They're wanting to rush forward, speak the truth to you that you are their wish fulfillment. Which is probably why they're having to temper themselves so much. This is an ener This is like a pent up energy. Like if you've had your dog like locked in a, a dog kennel or something all day while you're at work. Or kept in one small room while you're at work. When you come home and you let them out. How they get the rips and run all over the place. That's kind of like this energy here. And that's why they're having to temper themselves. To clarify this Knight of Swords. We got the Ten of Pentacles. Justice. And the Two of Wands. Ten of Pentacles. This is, like I said, most people's wish fulfillment. We got wish fulfillment. Ten of Pentacles again here. Their wish fulfillment is to be reunited with you. To be successful and victorious with you. We've got the Nine of Pentacles here. And the Sun. Oh my God. And the Lovers. This person... This person knows like they know like they know that you are the one for them. This is divine counterparts. This is soulmates, twin flames. This, the sun, is the happiest card in the deck. This is happiness, joy, abundance, bliss, this harmony. This is the best card you could possibly get. Massive abundance, massive prosperity, wish fulfillment, the ten of pentacles. This is you guys combined together. Making something very stable, very prosperous together. They believe that this is the right thing. This is the just thing. This is a very balanced connection. They're wanting to rush forward and speak the truth to you about all this. Take actions towards building this with you. Two of Wands. This is a crossroads. This is a fork in the road. A decision point. This is about which path leads your person to the world that they want which is you, and which path do they need to leave behind? And this is them rushing down that path. <laughs> For this, this Ace of Wands, this is the last card in your person's energy. This is a passionate new beginning. Let's clarify this Ace of Wands, please. Tell me more about this passionate new beginning, please. Why is this Ace of Wands here for Aquarius' person? That one, huh? Okay. Why is this Ace of Wands here, please? Let's get one more. Gotcha. The bottom of the deck, we have the Lovers again. They want a passion and new beginning with their soulmate, with their twin flame, whatever label it is that you choose to place on that, they view you as that. This is divine counterparts. These are two people who are supposed to be together. You know, we already saw that. And I said this before, this has got like divine guidance all over it right here. This is all major arcanas. This is the universe being involved, turning the wheel of destiny, the wheel of fate, lining things up so that what is supposed to happen will happen. And then here we've got Divine Counterparts, second time we've seen this now. Hmm. Okay. To clarify this Ace of Wands, we got the Ten of Swords, we got the Page of Wands, and we got the King of Swords. So this Ten of Swords, this is a swift ending, this is a painful ending. Sometimes an ending in betrayal, sometimes an ending you didn't see coming. This is a very swift ending to something. Clearly, there was some sort of problematic thing in the past here with all of this stuff back here. We had the Five of Pentacles also about being left out in the cold. <sighs> being stuck in their head. Being afraid they can't offer their cup of love. I think this is the ending to all of that crap. 
and a passionate new beginning with their lover. This, now, this also represents a choice needing to be made, which we saw with this Two of Wands. This is a fork in the road. Which way do you go? Which path takes you to the world you want, which is this toward you, and which path do you need to leave behind? All that stuff that from the past that was bogging them down, that's what they need to put the end to here. And I think that's the actual decision they've made, yeah. Yeah, we've got the Nine of Pentacles, the Nine of Cups right under this Lovers. This is like both of you guys being totally emotionally happy and fulfilled on your own, having self-love. You're both emotionally stable. Uh, you're both physically or financially stable, material 3D world stable and abundant on your own. Yeah. And this is how you get to, you know, the Ten of Cups. You both have to be in this Nine of Cups. If you're not, then you guys are going to be too busy siphoning love out of each other's cup. There won't be any any ability to overflow the cups to fill up that tenth cup. And I think you guys have that. Yeah, there's this, you guys being reunited and celebrating. There is success and victory again. There's the sun again, the happiest card in the deck. And, and there's this moving forward past all the problems and challenges of the past, getting out of the troubled waters, moving forward into the calmer waters, going toward what you actually want. Still carrying some burdens of the past with you a little bit, but that's you guys moving forward into calmer waters. Next we have this page of wands. This is news and messages of passion and desire. This is taking the first steps down a new path, taking the first steps. We saw some, the birth of something new here. Deciding which path to go down. This is taking the first steps down the path that leads them toward what they want, what they desire. And we have the King of Swords. This is a decision-making energy. This is someone who's very smart, very analytical, very logical, very reasonable. They're not interested in the emotions or the story. They're only interested in the truth and the facts of the matter. And they're going to use the truth and the facts of the matter to make the best decision possible, the most fair decision possible for everyone involved here. And that that is to put an ending to all that stuff. It's to choose their path. Not only the one that leads to you, but also choosing the stuff they need to leave behind. Get all that balanced out. And they've put an ending to all that so they can have this passionate new beginning with you. This this Ace of Wands is the wand that he's carrying as he goes down that new path. And he's being very logical and very smart about the whole situation. Now, if you still have questions that you want answered about this situation or your relationship, then click on any of the videos that just appeared on your screen right now. And when you do, you'll be taken to more Aquarius love readings that can give you more insight and more clarity about what's really going on in your particular situation. And I'll see you in the next video.